There we go. 19 mil. So that right there. That's what we gotta take off. Okay, let's see. I know this is gonna work. Maybe this will make things easier. That's the hardest part. That's done. Okay, so. Focus. So it looks like there's a little tab right here. You can lift up and sort of get it over the flange like that and then kind of work your way around to pull it off. So let me, let me give that a shot. Oh. Get an exhaust, they said. It'll be easy, they said. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 I feel it. Coming. Oh, yes. Yes! Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you, you rubber mount. Fuck you. Just two more of those hangers to go, right? All right, so let's take a look at the finished product. So here's the muffler out. No fuss at all, of course, easy peasy. But look how this is. This is just awesome. So you can uh, like push them in or pull them out or move them around or however you like, but this is how I like them. Just enough so that you can see the Takeda logo right there. You know, I've got it sticking out about a much inch and a half or so. I think it looks pretty good. Let's take a look from the side. Yeah, just enough of that, I guess, hot rod appeal sticking out there, just so you can see it from the side. Oh, let's take a look under here. Okay. So, I'll say right now that uh, the main reason why I cut the video short in the middle of putting the sucker on is because it was way more difficult than I had thought it would be. I thought it'd be pretty easy. Even though I've never done it at exhaust before, I thought, oh, if it's just, it's all bolt-on, it's all, it'll all be fine. No welding or anything. I don't even have the equipment to do that. Anyway, but, looking under here, this wasn't too bad, that was on video. Uh, but then, honestly, the part that I had trouble with, and I got the first rubber mount off, uh, easy enough. It's the back two that are a pain in the fucking ass. Seriously. Uh, I must have spent an hour getting the two back here off. Absolutely insane. I was in there with a the screwdriver. Um, I did everything short of putting some kind of penetrating oil in there because I didn't want to mess up the rubber. Uh, but I finally got them off and that's honestly what took very the longest time anyway. The second problem is the included C-clamps that they give you are not the best. Uh, and actually the bolt that I had, I had already torqued it up pretty good until I, before I noticed that um, there was some extra material on some of the threads. Like it wasn't cut all the way, so whatever tooling they're using for, for this, uh, I guess it's getting dull. Anyway, uh, I messed up one of the, uh, I, forget, I don't know what they call these, um, but I messed it up, the, I messed up the threaded side, and, uh, basically broke it. 
not the, not the whole clamp. The clamp itself was fine. I just, uh, I, I sheared the bolt right off when I was trying to back it out with the impact driver when I was trying to figure out what was going on. However, I just went to Lowe's and they have these. So I got a half inch bolt here and uh, they sell these. They only come threaded, so I had to use an eight millimeter uh, bit to go ahead and uh, drill out the uh, threads in one of these. Because if you keep the threads in both when you tighten this up, uh, the head will just hit right here and you'll end up screwing up the bolt. So um, yeah, I just drilled that out. So that's on there secure. The other side, uh, no real fuss getting that clamp on, and the other clamps are much, much beefier. These are really nice. So no problem at all with those. It's just these right here getting the tips on. So um, driving around town with one tip on, the other one just in the passenger seat. Uh, but it sounds pretty fucking great.
that sounded stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't see many two uh, Elantra GTs around. That one wasn't even a sport. Ooh, I think I saw a WRX right there. Ooh, and a 30 mile an hour limit. Boom. Time to do something illegal. Sexy beast right there. Yeah. People got it to bed anyway, right? It's 10 o'clock. slow down before I do get the cops called on me. to a complete stop. Look left, right, left, off we go. Trying not, actually not to make too much noise. Not a complete dick. So, it seems to be, if you're not really gunning it, it's pretty much quiet. Like right now, I'm just maintaining speed, going 50-ish miles an hour. I can barely hear the exhaust at all. I don't have the air running or anything. 
Uh, if I'm off the gas completely, uh, see the engine. It's uh, the car's engine braking a little bit. I can kind of hear the rumbling. Uh, it's not too bad. It's pretty quiet. If I had music or something, I wouldn't be able to hear it. Right now, it's completely silent. So if you're cruising around in a neighborhood, you'll be pretty okay. You just got to be careful not to get on the gas at all, especially when that turbo kicks in, then it gets pretty fucking loud. I think that's actually the truck up there, not me. Alright, so I'm just going to take this on the highway and uh, we're going to see what the drone's like there. I'm going to take it out of sport mode now. There we go. To our left, no one's coming. Great. Alright, so going about 60 now, there's an ever so slight drone in the back, again though, if I was playing music at sort of a medium low volume, it would be completely drowned out anyway, wouldn't be able to hear the exhaust. And then right now, just really cruising along at 50, just hardly hear anything at all. Maybe if I was sitting in the back, I could hear some more, but it's really not that bad. We get, the, get on the highway in just a minute here, just so we can see, make sure that if we're going on a road trip or something, we don't have to listen to the drone all the time. Ah. I really don't like the cold, but, you know, at least we go a little bit faster, right? One good thing. Doesn't do a whole lot for us as far as grip goes, though. And definitely, if I just get on it a little bit, once I get above, like, 2,500 RPM or so, which I believe is about when the turbo spools anyway, uh, it makes sense that it gets loud. I think I'll go ahead and turn on cruise control. Alright. Cruise control set to 65. Uh, not in sport mode or anything, so let's just see real quick what we've got here as far as sound goes. So I'll shut up. So far, very civilized, hardly hear anything at all, if anything. Up a little bit of drone there. Oh, 
way up. Alright, so basically, going up hills and such, then you'll hear a little bit, but that makes sense because you need a little more power to get up the hill. But if you're on, if you're going on a downgrade at all, or if you're just on flat ground or a slight incline, it's pretty much silent, which is exactly what we're looking for. Uh, the other thing is, if you're going down a hill and your engine braking again, like earlier, you will hear a little bit of drone, but I mean, that makes perfect sense. Let's just find a place to turn around. I'm gonna put it back in sport mode now. All right, there we go. I'll find a place to turn around and then we'll gun it. There's a spot. All right. Let's see what do we got right after this forward focus I would imagine yeah I mean, maybe there's a little more power there. I can hardly tell a difference. It feels about this, just as fast to me. It's a six second car to 60. It's definitely peppy. Just, um, I don't think the exhaust made a big difference, if any, as far as power goes. Again, it's just axle back. It's just basically them taking the muffler off. There's not a whole lot of a difference. Uh, inner diameter of the pipe's a bit bigger. Maybe it'll help with flow, but again, that should only really affect things at higher RPM as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I remember looking at the dyno chart and it's a pretty consistent little raise in power across the RPM band. It's, it does not make that big of a difference. If you really want some extra ponies, you are probably be better off gutting your cats or just putting a race pipe on or something. But, uh, you know, I want to keep this thing legal. Well, reasonably legal, I mean, uh, I don't know if uh, I might get some complaints about the noise. Well, probably not if I'm not, you know, an idiot gunning it in neighborhoods and such, which you really shouldn't do anyway. It's not, it's not safe, you know, kids in the road and that kind of thing. But uh, as far as on the highway, as far as I'm concerned, it passes the highway test. Definitely a livable car. I almost think like the extra sound, the extra noise makes me feel like I'm going faster than I really am. It's really nice, honestly. Yep, a little bit of drone, just engine braking down this hill. Yep. Again though, it's pretty civilized when you're just driving like a normal ass person, for sure. Going up hills, you get a little bit, but again, not a big deal. Honestly, you'd get about as much sound out of like a C7 or a C8 just with the stock exhaust. And uh, I mean, they've got like those uh, valves that open and close. My old BMW had one of those too. When you get above a certain RPM, it would open up just to allow more airflow. Speaking of the devil, there's an E46 right over there. Yep. At a 330CI, the thing was pretty awesome. Had 120,000 miles on the clock though, so <laughs> kind of kind of a hot potato that one. I mean, I guess 120 is not bad for like an engine, but 
you know, it's an automatic uh, BMW automatics from back then. Well, I guess it was a ZF automatic, but still, 2005, not really trusting that car very far, very long. I only had it like a year before I got this thing. Needed something more reliable for school. Didn't feel like getting stranded on the side of a road in that, that old Bimmer. As awesome as it was to have it. Oh man, my phone is really getting hot now. No wonder they limit the recording to 10 minutes in 4K. This thing is getting hot. Come on, Slowpoke, let's go. Fucking hell, come on. Let's scare him. <laughs> Ooh, got a little bit of burbles on that one. Um, when I started the engine, it wasn't completely cold. I had to drive to Lowe's to get that uh, extra bolt and um, whatever you call those like little threaded cylinder things. But um, yeah, it's uh, when it's running rich, when it's cold, you definitely hear a lot of pops and gurgles and that kind of thing, and it, it is it is pretty nice. Uh, and then right now, like whenever if you let off the gas really quickly probably can't pick up on it but you definitely hear some popping and crackling back there uh it sounds honestly it sounds exactly like a veloster n or an i30n uh so probably just if one of those was like a five out of ten on the sound this would probably be like a six or seven six and a half out of ten as far as volume goes anyway we are back Try not to hit my mailbox there. <laughs>